Thank you, Thomas. Thank you for the invitation to give a speech today. And thank you for the opportunity to give the presentation from the industrial view and the energy sector view. We have dared to title the presentation of today, Fossil Energy or Fossil.com. And there's a strong signal in this title. And I think it's important to say here that when we talk about design, it's always a question about fundamentals. And uh, remember that the situation of today is based on the fact that we do have a 200 years story about cheap fossil fuels. Coal for the 200 years, oil and gas for 150 years. They have been abundant and they have been very cheap, they have been portable and they have been storable. And that's the basis for all what we are facing today. The title of the conference is Impact Society Through Engineering Design. And I think the question based on this presentation will be how will fuels and engineering design impact society in the future? Dong Energy, that's a utility I belong to. It's a, to some extent, small company. It's big in Denmark. It's uh, to some extent a little bit big in Northern Europe, but in a world scale, it's a small co uh, company. We are an integrated energy company. We are active in the whole value chain from oil and gas production in the North Sea. We are dealing with uh, transmission of energy. We are dealing with generation based on fossil fuel plant, gas fire plant, oil fire plant, biomass plants, and of course, wind energy. And then we are selling and distributing energy to uh, wholesale market and uh, customers. Electricity, heat, gas. And the ambition of the company is to double in the next five years. And uh, it means that we will almost follow the route of the Vikings and move further on from Denmark into the northern Europe uh, area. The key figures of the company is a revenue of about 8 billion euro and, uh, uh, um, and the EBITDA up to close to 2 billion uh, euro. I dared, as I said in the beginning, to call or title the presentation Life Inside the Fossil Fueled Bubble. But why a bubble? I think we have seen the fuels, the fossil fuel, for 200 years, and I think it's a reasonable to talk about a dot com and a bubble because of the fact that we had talked about peak oil, we had talked about increasing demand and how to. Uh, fulfill the demand for energy in the future. Remember, <coughs> when it comes to history, that the age of the universe, 14 billion years, this uh, planet, 4.6, we have been here for almost 200 years from Africa and coming up to, to Europe, at least for the host, those of you who believe in that, uh, coming into Europe for 14,000 years ago, lived as if our, um, at gatherers, and we have developed farming for less than 10,000 years. Farming was the main part until the year 1800, when we understood or discovered how to utilize the fossil fuels. The steam engine was a very important tool to take up the water from mines. Together with coal, we were able to, to make a transportation system for trains, Water became a problem where before was a very, very useful part of transportation. And after trains, we invented the car and we have been able to transport goods and, and people from every area to another area. It's only 200 years of development. And along with this development, the, the world uh, GDP has grown, the population has grown, and we are almost living in cities, at least half of us. 200 years back, 3% was living in cities. The characteristics of a bubble is when there is a mismatch in between the intrinsic values and the market price. And it's very, very important to say that we don't see this at the moment. But also remember that when we talk about bubbles, there is two truths. There is a truth inside the bubble, and there's a truth outside the bubble. And that's, that's a part of the, the le lessons uh, for today. The indicators of the bubble being able to burst is, of course, what we have 
talk about scarcity of primary energy resources, uh, we do have to change to something else. The discussion about the threshold for global temperature, we have heard these figures from IPCC a lot of times, 350, 550, 450, we don't know whether we have reached the breaking point or not, but at least we know we are in a gray area at the moment. So business as usual is not a feasible option in the future we are uh, looking into. And finally, we heard Lars Pallesen this morning talk about weather phenomena. They are increasing in strength. At least some people think about, are we able to do something uh, on for beforehand and not only uh, coping with the problems these phenomena uh, gives? The basic assumptions in the Dong Energy Company for a future beyond the bubble is, of course, as we all know, the demand for energy will grow, and uh, we do pay attention on upstream activities, mainly as a transition fuel, gas, but also, of course, on biomass and wind and the sun. Having said the last three, biomass, wind, and PV, sun, uh, I've also said that clean energy is a vital part of the future. We are in a transition from this fossil-fueled world into a far more renewable future. And I also think that diversification is important. I think a lot of people, a lot of countries, think about how to avoid dependencies on either countries, sources, or technologies. Remember, before these 200 years, when we were based on a natural economy, all the so, uh, energy sources was based on what we could get from the sun and from the, fi from the field. Then we have spent 200 years utilizing parts of the fossil fuels, and now we to some extent should try to move at least back to part of this when we have to survive the 9 billion people. The fossil fuels, they are characterized, as I said, they are cheap, they are abundant, they have been abundant and cheap, they are portable and storable. And we have developed a central thought energy system. When we are moving into this renewable energy system, we are going to harvest the energy on every square meter on this planet, either on the, this plan from wind turbines, this plan for the PV, or on this plan for the biomass. In the beginning, we have to rely on central green and in the very end, we also have to rely on very, very local green. And we have to realize that this local green will conflict with the central thinking of the central fossil. And that's part of the challenge in the future. So that's the picture we always see. And we would like to make it more clear. We do have this vision. We would like to deliver, as a company, clean and reliable energy, and we would like to almost do it on the basis of renewable energy sources. The strategy is based on the fact that we were formed in 2006, based on a lot of other small companies in Denmark, and at that time we were mainly fossil fuels. 85% was fossil fuels, and 15% was uh, renewables. It's almost the same figures as we know for the world today, 80 to uh, around 80% is fossil fuels, and the 20% is something else, either renewables or nuclear, depending on where on the earth you are based. The strategy for Dong Energy, for the company, is to move into a situation where we, at least for the generation part, will move into 85-15 in 30 years from now, uh, or at least last year, and we are on a pathway we have reduced to 21% during the last four years, and we are really on track for fulfilling this uh, goal in 30 years from now. I would like to say here that we have uh, we had some projects dealing with uh, clean coal. We have stopped a uh, new development of coal, a new plant for coal. We are, moving, we are still working with natural gas in different areas in northern Europe, and we are by far the largest offshore entrepreneur in the world and has installed more than half of the world's uh, offshore capacity uh, so far. And then we are dealing 
uh, with bioenergy, trying to develop new concepts for utilizing bioenergy in a far more efficient way regarding the use of the future. If we look into this future and try to realize what is the effects on beyond the bubble paradigm of the, of the designed society, the designed society as we have designed to the last 200 years. I think the very first and important sentence is the question, what will change in the designed society? And I think I can ask this question very easily. Everything will change. So if you didn't get all the messages from this conference, everything will change. I would like to deal a little bit more with urban design and architecture, heavy industry, and consumer, uh, consumer products uh, in three small examples uh, after. The first one, urban design. We have, as a utility, been part of the development in uh, different uh, cities. And of course, we're not able to change from one day to another. But the thinking in the de development of the city is very, very important. And one of the important thinking is the second here, that we are facing electrified future. All the wind energy, all the s most of the sun energy is delivered as electricity. Today, 18% of what we use is based on electricity almost also a, a world uh, figure. But I think a lot of people have calculated that in the future, in 30 or 40 years from now, more than 50% of, of energy demand will be covered by electricity. Electricity will be a main carrier for energy in the future. We have to identify how to design the cities when we have to be able to harvest the energy in the city, combined with central energy put into the city. We have to identify far more intelligent buildings and try to make them in a way so they can cooperate with the intelligent energy system. Mentioned large amounts of local energy will be produced, have to fit in with the sensor. The characteristics of the fossil fuels was that they were portable, storable, abundant and cheap. Now we are going to rely on energy when the sun shines, when the wind blows, when the waves are there, and when the biomass do have a quality where we can utilize it. So we have to rely on the renewables, and we have to adapt in behavior so we are able to harvest the energy. And of course, if we are going to do so, the engineers and architects have to work closely together and think closely together. In the very beginning, when we only talk about signals, it's okay. We are not green, but uh, we would like to be seen as green. But we have to go down the pathway and end up in a situation where we are partial sustainable, where we are able to operate in islands where we are sustainable, and we have to connect these in grids so we really can say and can live as green and renewable in the future of uh, seen from today. Heavy industry. Coal, iron, petrochemical, developed during the last 100, 150 years. But a lot of these uh, companies are now thinking about how can they change the fuel to something else? How can they produce a greener fuel? And how can we produce materials which can be used, uh, which can be used uh, instead of all the intermediate materials which are coming from the petrochemical industry? We, have, we see it every day. Some of these big, big companies are trying to identify methods. How can we utilize the biomass in our material streams? Biology will be a very, very important part of the future. And design regarding biology will, of course, also be a very, very important part. Regarding the thinking, I've shown on the right-hand side here a concept um, dealing with the municipality solid waste. In Denmark, in a lot of countries in Northern Europe, we are burning the waste, try to utilize the energy, but we have developed a concept where we try to reuse the materials, reuse the different materials in the, uh, in the, in the waste, and then gasify the uh, rest so we can use it for uh, energy uh, in a better way than just burning and destroy a lot of the important materials which are in the municipality's old waste. 
we have developed a process uh, regarding producing second gen biofuel based on the straw. And uh, I think it's, it's a very, very strong uh, concept. It's called Inbicon. And uh, it's one of the, uh, the main processes in the world today, trying to utilize the best part of the straw producing bioethanol. And finally, we have developed a, a, a continued development of gasification process where, where we are able to utilize the, the gaseous part in the boilers. And second, we are able to recycle the nutrients so we don't uh, destroy the field because we are facing two important battles in the future uh, regarding the fight for, for square meters for biomass. And the first one is, of course, the battle regarding food. And the second one is the battle about the quality of the, the, the carbon in the soil. But we strongly believe that mankind will be able to solve this. Yes, petrochemicals have to be changed to chemicals from local biomass and waste. Consumer products and transportation. We are facing electric vehicles. Renault has put a huge amount of euro in the development of electric vehicles. But fueling electric vehicles will change completely compared to the way we fuel petrol cars today. In Europe, we do know these figures 2030 or 2020 in 2020 or 2030 in 2020. But we'll talk about reduction of CO2, sustainable resources, and increased efficiency. But along with these figures, which are thought from the existing energy system, where the fossil are the central and the renewables are the, are the, are the, are the marginal, we are approaching a situation where the renewables have to be the basis and the very well-known cheap portable fossil fuels have to be the marginal. They have to bridge all the gaps in the years to come where we can't fulfill the demand from the sun and the wind but at the very end, we have to rely on the natural sources. And in this future, there will come a lot of fluctuating energy from the central part, the, green, the central green, but also a lot will come from the local part. And there's only one change in the picture in the, very, uh, in, in, in the, in the bottom line here. That's, that's not mentioned a consumer. It's mentioned a prosumer, a person or a company or an individual who are either a consumer or a producer. But when they harvest the sun or the wind or what they either harvest or use for themselves or send it to a grid, they will change. So it will be a completely different attitude and behavior of this consumer trying to earn money in the future energy system. Designing beyond the fossil fuel bubble. I think so far we have paid a lot of attention on user driven innovation. Um, in the future, where we have to rely on all these renewables, I think it's important that we are trying to help or to support by the, in the innovation so we can rely also on the, 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 the demand from the, from the system. And we have to develop products where we uh, have, have added the, all, the, all the need from the system, whether the sun shines, the wind blows, and, and so on. And we have to develop products so we help you as a user in the chains where you can utilize the energy which the nature delivers in the very best way. Another important part is also that we have learned, and our experience is that we have, uh, our learning is based on this organizational learning, uh, learning organization, uh, and so on. But I think if we are going to adapt as fast as we should into this far more renewable future, where we at least rely on the renewables and harvest them, there is really a need for a revolution regarding learnings into this future. Designing beyond the fossil fuel bubble, I think we need to balance in between the triangle where we see the industrial needs based on all what we have learned for a lot of years. We look into the user needs, what is the need of the individual, but of course also the societal needs, what is the needs from the nature where we have to rely on the resources, where we have to put a price 
on and a value on the nature. We're not using nature as something we just take from, but we have to rely on the demand from this area. We have for a long, long period been teasing in the different technological fields in the future where we have to rely far more on the way we design, the way the politicians frame the regulatory work and so on. We have to change a lot of other things that we haven't been able to change in the, few, in the, in the past. Remember, all the rules, all the thinking during the last 200 years has been based on the fact that the resources had been there, they have been cheap, they have been abundant. You could just petrol your car, click on the button when you want electricity. In your future, we have to rely on the natural resources in a far more uh, ex uh, extinct way than today. So we have to be far more cross-disciplinary in this uh, future. We have to think about the system also. So, coming to an end, are you designing for a fossil bubble or not? Are you a part of, the, part of the solution or are you part of the problem? Are you inside the bubble or outside the bubble? Thank you. Charles, thank you very much for that wonderful speech. Um, we're actually within time, so we can take a, a couple of questions from the floor. Can we have a raise?